Hello friends, building a strong and stable structure is important and it all starts with a good foundation. In construction, pile foundations are one of the most common methods used to create a solid base for buildings. In this video, we will talk about pile foundations. A pile is a long, strong cylinder made of materials like concrete or steel that is pushed into the ground. Piles are used to provide a strong support for buildings and structures. Do you know why we use pile foundations? We use them in two situations. The first is when there is a layer of weak soil near the surface that cannot support the weight of the building. So the loads of the building have to bypass this layer and be transferred to the layer of stronger soil or rock that is below the weak layer. Second is when a building has a very heavy concentrated loads such as in high rise structure, bridge or water tank. There are two types of pile foundations, end bearing piles and friction piles. In end bearing piles, the bottom end of the pile rests on a layer of especially strong soil or rock. The load of the building is transferred through the pile onto the strong layer. In a sense, this pile acts like a column. The key principle is that the bottom end rests on the surface which is the intersection of weak and strong layer. The load therefore bypasses the weak layer and is safely transferred to the strong layer. Friction piles work on a different principle. The pile transfers the load of the building to the soil across the full height of the pile by friction. In other words, the entire surface of the pile which is cylindrical in shape works to transfer the forces to the soil. To visualize how this works, imagine you are pushing a solid metal rod of say 4 mm diameter into a tub of frozen ice cream. Once you have pushed it in, it is strong enough to support some load. The greater the embedment depth in the ice cream, the more load it can support. This is very similar to how a friction pile works. In a friction pile, the amount of load a pile can support is directly proportional to its length. Now let us understand what are piles made of. Piles can be made of wood, concrete or steel. In traditional construction, wooden piles were used to support buildings in areas with weak soil. Wooden piles are still used to make jetties. For this, one needs trees with exceptionally straight trunks. The pile length is limited to the length of the single tree, about 20 meter, since one cannot join together two tree trunks. The entire city of Venice in Italy is famous for being built on wooden piles over the sea water. Concrete piles are precast, that is made at ground level and then driven into the ground by hammering. Steel edge piles can also be driven into the ground. These can take very heavy loads and save time during construction as the pile casting process is eliminated. No protective coating is given to the steel as during driving this would be scrapped away by the soil. In areas with corrosive soil, concrete piles should be used. Now let us understand how piles are designed. As pile foundations carry a lot of load, they must be designed very carefully. Every pile has a zone of influence on the soil around it. Care must be taken to space the piles far enough apart so that loads are distributed evenly over the entire bulb of soil that carries them and not concentrated into a few areas. Engineers will usually group a few piles together and top them with a pile cap. A pile cap is a very thick cap of concrete that extends over a small group of piles and serves as a base on which column can be constructed. The load of this column is then distributed to all the piles in the group. Now let us understand how piles are constructed. Piles can be either cast in place or precast driven piles. 
First, let us understand steps involved in casting place piles. It starts with hammering a thin walled steel tube into the ground. Remove all earth left inside the tube. Lower a steel reinforcement cage into the tube. Cast the pile by pouring wet concrete into the tube. The thin walled steel tube is called casing. It only serves to form a secure mold for casting concrete that is free from earth and debris. It has no structural role to play after the casting is complete. Some soils are highly cohesive, meaning that if one drills a hole into the soil that is say 1 foot wide by 50 feet deep, then the soil holds the shape of the hole and does not collapse into the hole and block it. If such soil is present at the site, then one does not need to leave a casing in place. One can use the casing to drill the hole for the pile and then remove it and then cast the pile in place. This saves cost as the same casing tube can be used to drill holes for all the piles. Precast driven piles are first cast at ground level and then hammered or driven into the ground using a pile driver. This is a machine that holds the pile perfectly vertical and then hammers it into the ground blow by blow. Each blow is struck by lifting a heavy weight and dropping it on the top of the pile. The pile is temporarily covered with a steel cap to prevent it from disintegrating. The pile driver thus performs two functions. First, it acts as a crane and lifts the pile from horizontal position on the ground and rotates it into the correct vertical position. And second, it hammers the pile down into the ground. Pile should be hammered into the ground till refusal, at which point they cannot be driven any further into the soil. Now let us understand special piles. Pile driving is very noisy and causes massive vibrations through the soil. For this reason, it is sometimes difficult to use them in sensitive locations. For example, if an operational hospital or science lab is to be extended, driving piles could cause unwanted disturbance. Their use is also restricted in residential areas in many countries. The vibrations could also cause structural damage to older buildings that are close by. In such situations, it is possible to use micropiling or helical piling, neither of which rely on hammering. Micropiles or mini piles are small piles that are constructed in the following way. Step 1 A hole little larger than the pile diameter and the full length of the pile is dug into the ground using an apparatus like a pile boring machine. Step 2 a precast concrete pile is lowered or pushed into the hole. Step 3. A concrete grout is poured into the gap between the pile and the earth. Helical piles are steel tubes that have a helical or spiral blades attached to them. These can be drilled into the ground, meaning that the pile acts as a giant drill bit and is rotated and pushed into the ground from above much like a screw drills into wood. Once the steel pile is driven into the ground, a pile cap is poured on top of the pile to prepare it for the construction above. So friends, this was all about pile foundations. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.